nothing to say if the chef was on his way. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me back at the podium today, and the speakers are so easy to introduce. Who doesn't know these two gentlemen? Uh, they have both served on our city council, the author of our mayor, of course, and Rick Price from Minnesota on the Board of Legislature. So, how many of you remain undecided about mayoral elections? Go ahead, raise your hand. Got some undecided here? You are the people that I expect to ask the best questions today. Because after all, that's what our club is all about. Even if we're only carving up two out of three politicians for lunch. So, being the mayor is serious business. Over 2,700 employees, we need a budget of over $200 million. Excuse me, I have to take this. Hello? Half late, I was just saying that. Agenda. Uh, there was something that was missing back home. 
Uh, and aside from my family, uh, what I found in the legislature is, is that policy and uh, ideas weren't as important as partisanship. And that's very different from local government, and that's especially true here in St. Petersburg. You know, for six years I had the pleasure of serving with Rick Baker. Rick's a Republican, I'm a Democrat. Even worse, he's FSU and I'm UF. <laughs> but of the things that we differed upon, none of them had to do with our love of the city, and none of them interfered with our desire of working together to move the city forward. Because that's what you deserve. Uh, and, and that's what you're going to get from me as mayor. It's all about moving the city forward. We need to face the big issues like the pier and the race, but we also need to pay attention to the other issues that make cities great. An economic engine that's fueled by strong public education, sound infrastructure, and high quality of life. That's what makes cities special. That's what makes St. Petersburg special. This an economic engine is, is fueled by small businesses that are local, that not only hire local people and pay them a good wage, but they also give our community the character that makes our city so special. And that's what I'm going to bring to City Hall. Now, we need to have some change, and change has to start from within. And to me, the job of mayor isn't just to uphold or up, uphold the status quo, and it isn't simply to point out what's wrong and what's not working. It's to be a problem solver. It's to be innovative and proactive. It's to be a writer to bring people together. It's to listen, to learn, and to lead. And nowhere will that be more apparent than in my administration. See, we need to have a smarter government. And that doesn't mean a bigger government. It means a government that more accurately reflects the demographics of our community. And it empowers all members of our community. Now, I'm not running for mayor because I want to turn City Hall upside down. I'm running for mayor because I want to move the city into the future. St. Petersburg is an extraordinary place. It's made up of extraordinary citizens. Uh, and as such, it deserves the best government possible. It's my intention, with your help, to bring that government to St. Petersburg. I thank you for being here today. I thank you for caring about our city. Uh, and for giving uh, Bill and I an opportunity to tell you what we stand for and what we believe in, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Bill Foster, candidate for mayor, and I did not approve that introduction. Thank you, Tyler, for allowing me to the opportunity to speak to you today. And to answer any questions that you might have for those very few on the site that are in the room. And I think debates are a very significant part of the democratic process. I think it's important that you get to hear from the mayor, from somebody who wants to be mayor, to find out what I've done for you for the past three and a half years. I think it's important, so I want to commend Rick Bryson and thank him uh, for attending this debate. Otherwise, it's just all in your own name. It's kind of, it could be boring. But I also enjoy coming to tell your faith. For the past four years, every January, it has been my distinct honor to open up the season with Tiger Bay and to get a state of the city of trust every single year to this month. We always have a good crowd. We always have really good questions. I think for two years running Mayor Gerard out of Argo on the thing in the wall. Well, we'll not be calling on her today. That will be the uh, one. But it's always been an honor and a joy. I will say I don't need a timekeeper. My lovely wife is sitting right in front of me. And she'll do this or give me an expression that uh, will tell me to stop talking. So, uh, I'm glad that my wife and my daughter and my father is here today. You know, four years ago, I promised to lead this city through the worst economic recession that we have seen in our lifetime. And to right-size government, to adjust 
the budget. And to make sure that the city was postured for the end of the recession. You see, we all know that recessions don't last forever, but you've got to get through them. And you have to make sure that the city is positioned to take advantage of economic development. To make sure that you focus on the detail that will, that will allow and cause really smart people with a lot of money to come to the city and say, you know what? I want to invest my money here. I want to build this here. Why? Because St. Peter's where it's at. Because St. Petersburg is where the jobs are being created. St. Petersburg is where the housing needs are busting at the seams. And so for three and a half years we've been working on creating these environments of, yes, focusing on public safety. Focusing on the small things of what's smell and feel of customer service. Focusing on removing all impediments to development. Treating investors like partners, like taxpayers, and making sure that they got their certificates of occupancy and an expedited name. And guess what? That plan was worked. We have seen 2013 as what I call the return of the train. We've had a dozen projects, a dozen trains throughout the city. Building, creating jobs. I went out to a job site a few weeks ago, and there were 200 trades on the job with vertical construction. And that is job creation. And so some of the, the things, the first floor retail, and some of these amenities going in, these are all as a result of a lot of hard work of creating environments so people want to invest. <clears throat> we focus on the seven S's of safety, seamlessness, service, sustainability, small business, schools, and scenes. Scenes of art, culture, and sport. Making sure that we remain number one as a mid-sized city, as a destination for art and culture. Creating these environments to get people to fall in love with St. Petersburg. And for visitors who come here to make sure, you know what? I want to come back, I want to bring my family, I want to stay here to make sure that we have these environments so our young college graduates like my daughter say, you know what? I want to come back to St. Petersburg. I want to raise my family in St. Petersburg. I don't want this challenge. Export. I want the town to stay here to love St. Petersburg, and that's what we've done. And every decision we made at City Hall, we've really put it to a two part test. Are we creating environments that are enticing, welcoming, and supportive to those interested in relocating, launching, or growing a business? And then the second part of that was are we providing a high level of customer service to our residents, our neighbors? neighborhoods and visitors, growing that number of people who love St. Petersburg. I think the answer to both questions is a resounding yes. From all indications, we've seen that the return of the crane and we are on track for a half a billion dollars this year in new construction. We're saying 2006, 2007 numbers. Pre-recession numbers come back. Our crime rates have been reduced. 2010, 11, and 12. And we did emphasize sweating the small stuff. And I've even authorized the hiring of five more officers, increasing our sweat strength to 550. And we've made changes in the police department to make sure that we retain those that we sent a lot of money training, making sure that they had competitive compensation. And making sure that we had the best serving the citizens of St. Petersburg. When I came into office in January of 2010, when I left City Hall with the evenings, and yes, I worked evenings, as the Chief Executive Officer, learning how to take the role as mayor and, and growing on that, there were hundreds and hundreds of people sleeping in front of, of City Hall, sleeping in front of St. Peter's, Princess Morgan, Christ United Methodist, was a sea of humanity, and, and I decided to assemble this group using the chief judge of this circuit and assembling the public defender, the state attorney, the sheriff, the 
Chief of Police here in St. Petersburg, social service agencies, and all of those meetings we created in the city Harbor. We created the bed spaces that enabled us to enforce an ordinance prohibiting sleeping and reclining on public rights I don't know if you've been by City Hall or that block in the evenings, but you will not see that. We tackled the manhandling issue. The City Council passed an ordinance prohibiting soliciting from a sidewalk because it's, da it's dangerous to do commerce where you've got a high degree of, of speed and traffic. So some of these issues we've been able to clear up. Are we perfect? Do we still have chronic homeless? Yes. Do we still have those willing to gain the system? Yes. You're going to see us change some of these, these policies and procedures from the Sheriff's Office and in the correction side to really address those that are truly kind. To get them to help but as a county, you decided that we can do better than a cardboard box on a sidewalk. And if you want to get off the streets into self-sufficiency, this is the greatest county to do that. If you want to get back, if you want to hand up, this is the county to do it. If you want to gain the system, this is not going to be the place. Are we short on family and children as far as the homelessness issue, yes, we're working with the YWCA, we're working with Salvation Army, we're working to create these affordable housing areas for women, children, and families. That's an underserved community that we will be working on for the next four years. Property values have increased. This is the first year at FY14 that I've seen and during my fingers there that we have a nice increase in property values. According to the Penelope Association of Realtors, home sales are up. Prices are up, and that's all good for you. We're going to continue to stress these things. We're going to work on economic development and job creation. And this announcement that, that I made two weeks ago with this partnership with the Chamber, the USF St. Pete, Edgar College, St. Pete College, and the Green House to grow jobs, launch jobs, create jobs, relocate jobs, retain jobs. We're going to focus on economic development and job creation. In education, well, I'll be announcing next week a partnership with the school system and Pinellas Education Foundation. We're going to continue to work on customer service, not only to the resident, but to the neighborhood. So, so both have access to the community services department, my night department, just do it. Have access to the same great customer service, whether you're an individual or a neighborhood. I guarantee you, we will have a fear. We will have a new police station. We will have the Tampa Bay Rays playing in Tom McCann Field. And the arts of this community will still be number one. Thank you all for your attendance and look forward to answering your questions. All right, Tigers, I'm just here to move things along. I'll take the knowledge of all the other questions. Mike, like, where are you? All right, who's up for a question? Uh, okay, going to second. The second question is right behind Peter Schorsch. Peter Schorsch, um, I'd like both uh, panelists to answer this. Uh, although there have been successes throughout the city, Mayor Foster, uh, Midtown has been particularly hard hit. Uh, you fired the live Davis, you tried to uh, close in Murphy uh, Pool. Um, the latest polling indicates that you are far behind at the border amongst black voters. In 2009, you said you wanted to become the first black mayor of St. Petersburg. Have you achieved your goal of becoming the first black mayor of St. Petersburg? And I'd also like to hear, Mr. Price, do you believe that Mayor Foster has become the first black mayor of St. Petersburg? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Sorge. Thank you for that question. I will never be the first black mayor of the city of St. Petersburg. That was a conversation I had with Representative Bruce on. But the intent was this. The intent was to work on the areas of greatest state. Now, did I inherit this, this great recession? Did I inherit the mortgage foreclosure crisis? Absolutely, but no excuses. We continue to work through the process. We continue to use the tools that we have. We continue to use it about neighborhood stabilization funds to work and really focus in areas of greatest need. 
And I helped restart the Deuces line, and I, I wanted to make sure that we had the same nomination along the Deuces. I negotiated a contract and a lease agreement with Bill Law, who came on after me, to make sure that we had this commitment from St. Petersburg College to build a 45,000 square foot campus right there on the Deuces next to the Mercy Hospital. I've worked with the African American community on the creation of this, this heritage trail because knowing knowing the, this wonderful history that we have in Midtown and Miles Park and throughout the city in the African American community, I think is, is hugely important. And going forward with this opportunity to have a community redevelopment area right there in Midtown with it with the tax increment finance district that will encompass not only the Melrose area, but Childs Park. And then together, not waiting on the increment that is accrued from the TIF, but co-working with the, the county as a joint CRA to go after grant monies and, 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 and new neighborhood stabilization fund, funds and, and project rebuild funds that the Congress can just get through the sequestration and fund these, these wonderful initiatives to allow us to invest in housing and job creation. And that's what it's going to take. But the passion was always there. The resources and the grant monies were, were during this recession, very difficult. But we have walked through the valley of the shadow and we have come out the back. And we are on, on the way, especially with the CRA, especially with the emphasis that we're giving. We're going to do great things in the town. Well, I think uh, Bill said it best in saying that he is uh, not a person. Black hair in the town. Uh, but you know, I, I will never criticize anyone for hiring and firing decisions that they make. Uh, especially when you're in the position of mayor, that's your job to decide who you're going to have in your administration. Um, what I do have an issue with is the fact that after uh, Goliath was uh, fired, that he wasn't replaced. Uh, and I have an issue with that because I think it sends a bad message to people in the town. The message it sends to them is, is you're not valued in the same way as we value other parts of the community. That we're not as interested in economic development in Midtown as we are in other parts of the community. Uh, and, and I think an example of that is, is what happened with Sweet Bay. Um, you know, we all have, none of us were in the room when that conversation took place, but we know a conversation took place. Uh, and we know that Sweet Bay is now closed. And hopefully the city is making strides to replace it because that community deserves it. But we haven't seen that forward growth in Midtown that, that, that Midtown deserves. We haven't seen the city spend its resources equally in Midtown as it's spent them in other places. And if you talk to people in Midtown, and I've walked weeks in Midtown and, met and talked to people in Midtown, what I hear is things like, why is it that I can drive down the road and I almost lose my suspension on my car because the roads are so poorly maintained? That doesn't happen in other parts of the city. Why is that? Because that's the way it, it feels to people in Midtown. There isn't equal spending of resources in their needs. Next question. Thank you. Dave Zachman. This is a tax increase question and has nothing to do with yellow rates. I noticed, Mr. Mayor, that your current budget proposes a tax increase minus the uh, focus on the rollback rate. Right? How many budgets in the past three years have you produced that had tax increases in them? And Mr. Christ, you were on the city council when the, um, the economy was pretty fat. Did you vote for tax increases while you were on the city council? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Zach. I think, and I have to go back to the to FY, 1999 was the first budget that I passed, and that I voted on. And I think from the David Fisher administration through the Rick Baker administration, I think every single year we had a tax increase. I understand you're not talking about military reductions, but we didn't start seeing tax decreases until property values started going down, and we kept the millage rate the same. So we had tax decreases, I think Mr. Baker had them in 8 and 9 or something like that. Under my administration, we had property value decreases, so we had significant decreases in FY10, I'm sorry, FY11 and 12. 
And then we had a tax increase in FY13 and a tax increase in 14 because we didn't go back to the military. rate. So I probably voted on every one of those budgets that was proposed by those administrations of a tax increase because we never did go to the rollback rate. Now I made a motion, and I can even remember when Mrs. Ford was on council because both of us were always cognizant of the rollback rate. We moved, one of us, would, I, I moved that we go to the rollback rate and either didn't get a second or didn't get voted on, but ultimately the responsibility is to pass the budget. So, under every one of those administrations, not once did anyone, any council, any mayor, go to the rollback rate. We were forced into the tax decreases in 11 and 12. And yes, there was an increase in 13. And why? Because in right-sizing government and downsizing and creating these environments for this incredible growth in the new normal, we got too much. And, and things weren't getting done. So, once we discovered what the new normal was, we had to Thank you, Dave, for the question. Uh, you know, during my time on council, I, I used to uh, jokingly refer to myself at times as Gilligan. And sometimes I felt like I was on an island and the only one voting a certain way. Um, when it came to the budget, uh, I often voted against the budget. I think if you go back and look at my voting records, you'll see that uh, I had issues uh, with the various different things that caused me to often vote against the budget. So I think in answer to your question, uh, I have to say that I, I did vote against many of those budgets. Next question. Okay. Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. Um, my question is directed mainly to Mayor Foster, but Mr. Carson, I'd like you to chime in as well. Mayor Foster, your literature says that you want Nels or St. Petersburg schools to get the resources that we and our children need and deserve. What are those resource sources, and do they include evening care for child care? I don't know yet. What's exciting about education? I'm glad you asked me about education. There is no single issue more important to your prosperity and the growth of St. Petersburg than the education of your children, my children, our children. Because education is economic development. Education is public safety. Education is job creation. It's those learning a trade or going to college so they, so they can earn a living wage, so they can pay a mortgage and become real homeowners, so they can pay taxes, so they can enjoy all of this prosperity in the city of St. Petersburg. That is the number one issue. Now, getting the resources that we need, there's been this, this imaginary divide of Walmart and Road, and you've got North County and South County. And I can remember as a, you know, as a kid at Northeast High School, we, and our eyes would light up when we would play football games north of Walmart and Road because they had big stadiums and nice grass, they had everything, and, 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 and we didn't. And I, and, and, and I think there's been great equity coming down through the line, and I see school board member Lerner here, and I think there's been a real recognition. We still have failing schools in the city of St. Petersburg. And if we're not educating our, our children, then how can we attract businesses and relocate when the first question they ask is, how are your schools? And we say, uh, we can't have failing schools. So getting the resources we need is all about partnerships. And this partnership and sharing the staff member with the school board, partnerships with the Education Foundation to make sure that we're focusing on safety kids, safety needs, safety resources. And then we partner and we recruit mentors, and everyone in here should be a mentor. You should be. It's your responsibility to be mentoring a child. But it's recruiting corporate partners as well, corporate partners for the schools, corporate mentors for administration teachers and principals, and it's resources and rewarding teachers that will go into some of these Title I schools and commit their time and talent and resources in some of the, the hardest areas to teach children to get them to come here. So that's all a part of the plan. Education is an issue where the mayor and I uh, share a similar view on the importance of it uh, to our community and to the economic vitality of this community. I think where we probably differ is my impression being that the focus on education from the city, uh, I, I don't see the same focus that we had uh, during the term of Mayor Baker. Uh, Mayor Baker really did some innovative uh, things when it came to education. Really was a, a leader, not just in uh, this community or even in the state, but was recognized nationally for the programs that he put in place and the emphasis 
that he put on education. And, and probably that's been one of my disappointments uh, over the past few years. I just don't feel like I've seen the same emphasis. Uh, and we need to. And it's interesting because when you're out talking to people and people say to me, the city, why are you talking about education? The city doesn't really control the school the district. It doesn't have to say over education. Well, we can be involved. We can make a difference. Uh, and it's not just taking those programs, the Mayor's Managers Award Program, or the partnerships with businesses and schools that Mayor Baker started. It's expanding on those and it's creating new ideas. One of the things that I'd like to see in every school in St. Petersburg is service learning, starting in elementary school all the way through high school. Service learning takes serve community service and it integrates it in the curriculum. And what happens when kids are doing community service is a couple of things. Number one, they start feeling better about themselves. Number two, their grades go up. Behavioral problems go down. Graduation rates go up. The environment in the classroom changes because kids are now enthusiastic about coming to class. And that makes it easier for teachers to teach. That single-handedly can change our classrooms. But we need to take steps like those in order to improve education. And, and no question, the city can have an impact. And it is extremely important. Just question over here. Rebecca Walker, very new member. An environmental question. Um, over 19,000 worldwide scientific peer review studies have shown that global climate change is real, human caused, and we've got to address it. Only 24 of those 19,000 peer review studies said nope. So my question is yes or no from you. Do you believe in the science? of global climate change, and what are your top three environmental issues that you think the city needs to address? It doesn't need to be long, it can be yes, no, and the top three. Uh, yes, I do believe that. Uh, top three, uh, I think we need to start putting a plan in place to address climate change like Key West is doing. Uh, I give it a lot of credit to being proactive in that, in that area and really starting to look at the impact it's going to have on their community, and we are a coastal community, we need to do the same thing. Uh, number two, uh, I'd like to see a sodium universe for recycling. Uh, and number three, um, I would like to have a full time staff person whose sole uh, job is to look for ways of greening our city, becoming more efficient, which will save us money, we will be smart with the investments. And number two, attracting those businesses uh, with that green technology, whether it's solar battery, LED. Uh, I think we have a, a, a potential that we haven't tapped into, and I would like to see us tap into that to create more jobs, good paying jobs in this community. The answer is yes. And the city of St. Petersburg is doing some really cool things when it comes to grading of the city. You know, the ability to, to, pleather, or to, to gold lead certifications and, and this, this CNG conversion and, and I think that's, that's certainly a priority. Compressed natural gas. We're, by, we're replacing our sanitation fleet as we speak to run on compressed natural gas. The maintenance is significantly lower. The mileage is higher. And guess what we're doing? We're going to take this step further. We're going to divert all of this effluent from Albert Clay to send it to the Southwest Treatment Plant. We're going to claim the methane as a byproduct. And we're going to be able to run that plant during peak hours using the gas product that, that we all produce and is produced through the treatment process. We're also going to be able to, to fuel our sanitation fleet using a gas product that used to be just burned up in the atmosphere. So that's something that we're doing now. And I think addressing climate change or uh, sea level rise and things like that, we incorporated that into uh, into the, the peer design. We will continue to make sure that that's all a part of it. We're, we're actually going to elevate it by six feet to meet our requirements. And whatever peer we build, we'll have to be elevated to accommodate for things such as that. We're going through this waterfront action plan now, which is a, a very exciting exercise that will incorporate things such as sea level rise and, 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 how, and how our future construction, especially along the, the floodplain, will look all the while preserving the park systems that we have. Uh, I also believe in voluntary curbside recycling. Because I don't believe in passing those and making it mandatory to make every single sanitation customer in the city have to pay for something. But on a voluntary basis, subscription basis, I think we can absolutely continue to do that. 
But, um, thank you. Thank <laughs> you, Yes. I'm Bob Haven. I'm one of the guests relatively few undecideds here in the crowd. Question for Mayor Foster. Mayor Foster, have you or anyone connected to your campaign organization engaged a polling organization that is making telephone calls to voters here in St. Petersburg? A polling conversation that begins quite nonpartisanly, sorry, and um, ask some questions about your for the lens, are you against the lens, and then begins to ask a series of questions in a way that most political experts call push polling, which uh, the first part of which, uh, the first section of which asks questions in a way that are very favorable to you. And then the last part of the conversation asks questions, poses questions in language that is very unfavorable to Mr. Christ. Are you in any way connected with that organization? We have done some polling, and as far as the specifics of the questions, uh, I have not seen that. Uh, but we, we, we have done polling. I think every campaign has done some polling. Uh, so uh, I don't know if that answers your question. But uh, we, polled, we polled last week or this week. And uh, as far as the push poll, it, it absolutely could have been. Okay, I follow up. Are you, are you saying that maybe that was your poll? It could have been. And if you were to find out that your poll was doing push polling that way, would you have struck? He's answering the question. Mr. Price, you have something to Yes. I can tell you, I haven't done a poll that uh, pushes positively for Mr. Foster and negatively for myself. <laughs> Millions of dollars to the arts and the Florida Orchestra and, 
and, and all of these entities that this person has given to. I'm not going to stand here and bash somebody who's given so much to the community and, and, and who, quite frankly, has turned around the Manhattan Theater and programming and invested his own money to make sure that A, it's successful, and B, that we reduce our subsidy. So yeah, could it have been a factor in the back of our minds? Yes. But where do we go from here? We have a contract with Big Free Entertainment. We're going to honor that contract. We're going to hold their feet to the fire and make sure that they continue to program the heck out of it. But he's been a great partner with the Florida Orchestra, and that was something that was kind of suspect going in. And, and you know, every time you talk to the Florida Orchestra, they're very pleased with how things have turned out. And, and the place looks better. And he's invested his own money. And he's reduced that subsidy. So where do we go from here? We're going to keep things just the way they are in the year. And by the way, he's spending his own money on Baywalk. That was a big issue when I took office. And, 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 and yeah, go by and look at it. Millions and millions of dollars to bring this asset back into your hands with something that will draw people in as a destination and make us all proud. Yeah, that's the way. Regrettably, this is where the uh, chicken hits the road. This is the last question. And I'm going to forward it to. Uh, um. I'm Lenny Ward. Uh, my question is for both of you. Uh, can you please outline your plan to enable alternative transit options within St. Pete and uh, as a member of the Bay Area Action? That's a great question. Transportation, when it comes to economic development, is key. It's something that I wish we'd handled 20 years ago or even 10 years ago, but, but we did. But I'm supporting Green Light, Green Light and Ellis. I'm supporting the, the people's right to vote on transportation initiatives. And, and we don't have to decide today whether it's light rail, whether it's bus rapid transit, whether it's trolley, whether it's, it's any one of these design situations. We have to, we have to have the money in place and substitute the PSTA ad valorem tax with a sales tax made predominantly by visitors and tourists and, and, and have that exchange of tax, but we have to have that designated resource to make sure that we can move masses of people from point A to point B. Because that's the only way you really thrive and grow with economic development. The transportation component, that, that key connection with Hillsborough County and the city of Tampa and those transportation hubs between TIA and St. Pete Clearwater and downtown St. Petersburg through the alternatives analysis I think is also key. So how we get there, what kind of structure supports, whether it's a designated lane or a separate rail structure, connectability with Hillsborough is key. So we're going to pass first year in Pinellas County first and then we're going to help Bob Buckhorn in Hillsborough County have a stay because Connectability is imperative to the success of any type of mass transit program. And I work with Pam and I work very closely on, on their rail initiative. And I continue to work with Bob Lutcorn on, on making sure that they do it right. But first, we have to pass it here. And we have to convince people that, yes, it's going to be hard, but we have to make sure that people see the economic realities of growth and, and, and growth potential development potential with mass transit. So that's a great question. Thank you. Well, I do support Greenlight and else, but I'm going to take a step further and I'm going to encourage all of you in this room to please vote for this initiative. If we are going to be able to compete on an economic basis with cities, whether it's Charlotte or Austin or any other community around the country, we have got to have mass transit here in the city uh, and in this community in general. Uh, and we don't have it right now. Whether it is in the form of light rail, or bus rapid transit, or the trolley, or I'll take a step further and we'll talk about um, uh, water taxis that go from downtown St. Petersburg to Channel Side, or to Clearwater Beach, or to Sarasota, or even a high speed ferry that goes from St. Petersburg down to Key West. We're going to take it from B4 Myers. We need to have public transportation in this county. It is critical. Uh, and, and I also believe it's part of the reason that the Rays have had the struggles they have had. If we can make it easier for people to get from Clearwater or Tampa or Sarasota to downtown St. Petersburg to go to a baseball game, we're going to see an increase in attendance because we know that they're putting a good, a good product on the field. We just need to make it easier for them to get there. So if we really want to increase economic development, please vote for Green Light Pals. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you to all your questioners, and thank you to Mayor Foster for joining me here today. Um, Bill and I have spent a lot of time together lately on the campaign trail, the uh, last couple of nights in particular. Uh, and I don't mind that because I like him, and I like talking to voters, actually. Bill and I have been in games five and seven of the Sandwich Cup final season. Um, one of the things that I've picked up on uh, in these candidate forums uh, is that the mayor has been really busy lately rolling out new initiative, initiatives and ideas. Uh, and if every year we're an election year, I think we'd probably be in a lot better shape today than we are. The fact remains that the two biggest issues that he inherited, which are the peer and the raise, remain unsolved. And it's been on four years. I can't imagine Mayor Buckhorn in Tampa or any other mayor using the recent recession as an excuse for not moving a city forward. The truth is, have to work even harder in tougher times. You have to get on a plane, fly to Washington or Tallahassee, and you have to fight for money. You need to meet with legislators and make your case in committee meetings to change the law so that you can do things like making nuisance abatement more effective and getting rid of some of the crime that's going on in the We're the fourth largest city in America, in Florida, excuse me. And part of, the one, part of one of the largest metropolitan areas in America. And we need to start acting. We also need to make sure that we're preserving our community so that we still maintain the special feeling that is St. Petersburg. We can be the fourth largest city, city and still feel like a small town that can be done. It is possible. And I'm ready to do it. I thank you. School board member Larry, come up again. It's your pleasure. <laughs> Thank you all for being here today. Thank you for such great, great questions and for your attendance. You know, for the past three and a half years, we've had a wonderful life. And no excuses. It's been, it's been a joy, it's been an honor, it's been the toughest job that, that I've ever loved. And yes, yeah, it's, it's long hours, it's 12, 14 hour days, it's being accessible from mayor's night out, breakfast with the mayor is open. Stay open and transparent. It's listening to you. And it's real easy to, to have perfect hindsight when you haven't been there. And it's real easy to stick your finger up in the air and form your political opinions based upon a poll or, 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 or certain circumstances. But I've had to make these tough decisions. And I think there's nothing about this city that is status quo. Everything, every year, study by study, we've been, I hope we've been filling holes in this beautiful ship that we call St. Petersburg. And while it's been challenging, we, we, we finally have this beautiful ship that's ready to sail. And I'm the only candidate that has any executive experience at all. You've invested in my three and a half years of, of, of practice and making sure that we continue to move this city forward. And my opponent, he talks about, you know, being able to work with, with Republicans, but he spent all of these years in the state legislature, and wasn't able to really pass anything. Even a Republican bill was that had that had that had Republican written all over it. It should have been supported by every party and every demographic of the state house because it had his name on it and couldn't pass. Had to wait another year to join the MPO and the PBC. So, yeah, it is about making sure that people are heard, that people are at the table. And that you're responsive to their needs. And yeah, it is putting the small stuff. And it's focusing on the little things like customer service, removing the impediments, creating these, these environments that have caused this. I didn't wait for an election year for all of these really bright people to say, hey, it's an election year, we need to start building things. We need to put the cranes up. Oh, that didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen without a lot of work. But thanks for your patience and thanks for you getting us here. And I'm excited about the future. I'm excited about the next four years. Because we're on a roll now. This is a beautiful ship. She is setting sail. And now is not a time for on the job training. Now is not a time to change the course. Now is not a time to change the cats. But I think we can all agree. Go downtown this weekend and go out of your community. There is nothing status quo about the city of St. Petersburg. God bless you.
Mayor Foster, and Representative Grayson. Thank you so much for joining us today. St. Petersburg, you are a very fortunate community. We have two very well qualified candidates to be near St. Petersburg. Lastly, Yellow Chicken. Anyway, I'd like to remind you of our um, upcoming programs, but first I'd like to say, um, Mayor Foster, Representative Christ, when we have a mug in front of you that says, um, uh, as a token of our thanks, it says, Carmen got the politician. We thank you for uh, coming in here and, and, and allowing us to uh, bring out some things and claws. I hope it wasn't too bad for you. Our upcoming programs, again, are August 14th. Uh, we will have a forum here at the Yacht Club for the St. Pete City Council District 4 and 8 candidates. And uh, that will program go to about 1.30 and go a little longer. On Wednesday, August 28th, we will host the new Victoria candidate, Nan Rich, also here at the Yacht Club. And Tuesday the 10th, we'll have Speaker of the House, Will Weatherford, uh, in the den for you. And that will be at the Marriott, though, if you just remember that. And then don't forget to pick up your tickets, um, graciously donated by the Tampa Bay Times and Bay uh, News 9 for the August 6th mayoral debate at the Palladium. I don't know if there will be a yellow ship in there or not, but I'm going to find out. Um, at this time, we would like to announce what you're all here to find out. The mayor, I have to say, you call it. <laughs> School board member of the world, please smile. Without a return, thank you.